What is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nicole Espresso and welcome back to another Infinite Warfare video here today on the channel. Today, it is Thursday once again here, so that means another episode of the 5 Things That Changed and Infinite Warfare edition here with this one. And with these ones, we take a look at some of the changes that have happened from the current build of the game right now after launch to the originals back in the early alpha, if you want to call it that, the COD XP build, and then as well as the public beta. So in this one, we got some interesting little ones that I think you guys will enjoy. So that said, if you guys enjoy this, drop a like down below if you guys are new to the channel, maybe consider subscribing to stay up to date with everything Infinite Warfare. We do these five things series every single Tuesday and Thursday, so if you guys are interested in any of these, make sure you stick around here so you don't miss a beat. But that said, here at this one, these five are a little bit more substantial, I think, or some things you might notice and are a little bit less nitpicky, but they are still kind of trivial in some sorts, but it is something that you might not know, and if you guys don't, well then you came to the right place here for this. But let's start off with number one today, that is going to deal with the main menu, what it showcases, and the design overall overall in its entirety. Now previously back in the alpha build, we're going to call it that just for reference, it probably was a very early beta build, not necessarily a late alpha build for COD XP, but the version we played out at COD XP, we're going to call it just for reference the alpha build with this to make it easier, but it was something that back out in LA in early September, we didn't really have too much to look at in terms of menu design. What we had was the player counts and the lobbies like that on the right like we see normally without the mission teams, we've covered that previously, but then also in the left side, there were only a few options for create a class, start match, and the game setup. So basically, we were in a little bit of a local lobby, a LAN custom game, if you want to call it that, but it was LAN though, so it was a little bit different than just say a standard custom lobby. Now, we've talked about some of the other changes here with this once again, like the mission teams not being there. We talked about additional features now being on the left hand side of the UI with it in the full game, but the thing that is going to stand out with this one is that there was not actually any combat rig in the middle of our screen. Previously, we just had the backdrop where it was the white interior of say a cargo bay or something like that, whatever it is for you guys, what you interpret it as, it was that in the back of the screen and nothing actually else in there. But currently we do have our specialist or our combat rig here within it that is chosen and it just adds a brand new field of view to it. It adds another little dynamic to it. Once again, it's something that brings it up to speed with the recent Call of Duty's Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare all had that specialist and operative system to it. Modern Warfare Remastered even has it so it brings it up to this brand new level that Call of Duty's had in the past couple of years. Is it anything that is game changing or game breaking? Absolutely not, but it is something that if you saw it back in COD XP, you definitely recognize that that is not there if your memory was jogged a bit. Additionally, a cool little thing with this is the fact that it has every little bit of your customization on top of it. So it's not just the base operative, it is whatever customization you put on that rig then carries over into that main menu. So pretty cool I think here with this, but the second change within this one deals with my favorite camo in Call of Duty Ghosts and probably one of my favorite camos overall, and it's reincarnation here within Infinite Warfare. So, for those of you guys that have seen some gameplay either up on the channel here or anywhere else on YouTube or any other media site that you may follow, it was something that the Spectrum camo was brought into Infinite Warfare, starting with the beta and the inclusion of supply drops in the beta, and it went by the name of the anodized camo. It was something that I even think got a little bit of a patch to it in the beta from the first week to the second, made it a little bit more chromatic, but that's something that is completely irrelevant here for this specific change within this, but it is something that it is no longer called the anodized camo within Infinite Warfare. The full build changed that a little bit, and it's one of the things that was changed not necessarily in terms of statistics or attributes, but simply a name change. This time around, it is now known as Spectrum V2, so it definitely associates more with the original Spectrum camo, a lot of people probably recognize Spectrum if you were to say that name of the camo from COD Ghost. So if you were to say, do you know that anodized camo in Infinite Warfare? A lot of people may just shrug their shoulders and ask you what you're talking about. But if you say Spectrum V2, well then the association kicks in and you probably recognize what camo they're talking about immediately. Whether or not that's exactly the reason why, I don't know, it probably isn't, but it is one that is a change here and definitely makes it a little bit more easy to recognize if you're looking for specific camos that you hope to get in supply drops. But number three with this one here today deals a little bit with team collision. This is something that once again was a decent subject of attention back in the beta. It was something that was changed up for the beta and a lot of people really liked it how it was back then and it was different from what Call of Duty had previously. If you guys do know what Team Collision is, it basically is if you run into your teammate, you get either a movement penalty either by slowing down or you just get completely blocked or something like that. I guarantee you know exactly what I'm talking about here whenever you actually go in and play the game. So back in the beta, you could actually run through some teammates or at least have a severely decreased movement penalty by running 
running into teammates. So this was something that honestly would be fantastic because with how much wall running there is, I promise you that you're gonna run through at some point in time during this year that you're gonna run into a teammate while wall running. I've already had it happen a couple of times, but it is something that things like that get annoying and it was nice to see this out, but it is back in Infinite Warfare with the full build of the game and it feels like almost standard levels of team collision once again, whether or not it still is slightly decreased, it definitely is a lot more apparent. That said, it's probably one of the few changes that we've talked about here within this five things series that I am not a fan of it being changed back to the levels that it was. I really would have loved to see it stay at the levels where it was in the beta where you could run through teammates and if needed, there was still a minimal penalty, but not too much that really actually penalized you to the extreme of, say, ending a streak or something like that. So I'm not really on board with that one, but it is what it is, and it's going to take the third change here with this one. Number four is going to be a very trivial one, but it's one that I think is really cool. I'm always a fan of the changes in the UI, the menu designs, and things like that, and this one caught my attention, but it is a very picky one. I will warn you here at the very start of this one. It is quite picky. There was a change to the quick draw attachments in create a class menus. Now I'll put them up on screen right now here for you guys so you can see the difference with this but the quick draw is a little bit more standard looking now at this point where it looks like the actual handle of a weapon like you'd pull up in a quick fashion. It is something that is kind of uniform in how it's been designed in recent years but the previous version back in the early alpha or early beta whatever it is once again from COD XP it almost looked like the stock attachment. It was something that it didn't really look like something that was underneath the gun but rather something that was at the stock end of the weapon where that actually looks like a uniform idea for a stock attachment. So it was something that really looked drastically different and I'm kind of glad it did get changed. It didn't really make much sense in that design terms, at least in my mind. I mean, I could be wrong here on this one. It might be something that it makes complete sense to you guys, but I feel like the quick draw design now is just a little bit more up to par and a little bit more up to standard with the recent design and also logical standpoints with this as well. So that is the fourth change. Number five in the fifth and final change for this episode today deals with the hardcore game modes. Now, I played a little bit of hardcore recently. I'm not the biggest hardcore player, but I was doing some camo challenges and all that kind of stuff, going for some headshots, some things that are no doubt so much easier in hardcore modes, but it was something that while playing with some friends, I did notice because when you get with friends, it is something you don't really care as much about your game. So some shots were either accidentally or possibly seriously shot at each other for just comedic effect, but it is something that teammates no longer take damage from what you do to them in hardcore modes, or at least that's how it is right now. It could be changed, but at the time being, teammates don't take damage in hardcore, but the thing that does penalize you as the player is the fact that there is a bullet ricochet. So what I mean by that is you no longer get off scotch free by team killing, whereas previously you'd get a couple kills and then be kicked from the server. It is something that you'll just die now immediately, probably then on top of that being kicked as well. I can't say that I've played around or griefed too much to the point where I've been kicked out as a result, but it would make no... It would be no surprise to me if that it also did that on top of it, but it is something a little bit different than previous years as of recently. I think actually World at War had this where you get team collision if you did take so many shots at a teammate, but I think it was cumulative, but I'm not entirely sure 100%, but regardless, it is something that especially compared to Black Ops 3, you wouldn't just be able to team kill with absolutely no penalty at the immediate point in time. Right now, if you do that, you're going to end up dying. So if you're on a streak and somebody walks in front of you, it still penalizes you the same way and you'll end up dying breaking that streak. So take it how you will. It is something that I guess is a nice way to take precautionary measures to get rid of griefing and other trolling, but it is something that also still is just as unlucky if somebody walks in front of you or something like that. So I don't know how I feel about it, but it is what it is. I'd love to hear your thoughts down there in the comment section down below, especially on that one, because that is probably one of the biggest changes here out of this one. But regardless, that is where we're going to wrap it up here today with this one. Hope you guys did enjoy. That said, if you guys did, make sure you drop a like rating down below. It really does help the video out and helps push it out to even more people that may be interested in this five things series. And if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with everything Infinite Warfare. And of course, Modern Warfare Remastered five things happens every single Tuesday as well. I'm going to be trying to keep up with the 50 facts too as well on Wednesdays. Though today's episode went live a day later, I just did not have the time in the day to get it up yesterday, which really sucked. I don't like missing uploads, but it is what it is once again here with this one. So stick around for all that kind of stuff. If you guys are interested, once again, drop your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Love to hear your thoughts down there. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this series as well. I have so much fun making these, bringing you guys some changes. So hopefully you guys do enjoy it once again here with this. But all that said and done, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for the continued support as of recently. It's been fantastic. My name is Benicola Espresso. I will see you guys later. Take care and peace.